Hi everybody, this is Anne. I get messages from people all the time telling me they finally got the courage to try working with underglazes, but they're frustrated with their results. That's one reason why I'm always on the lookout for easy but elegant ways to decorate a piece of pottery that I can demonstrate for you in the most non-intimidating way. Monochromatic designs are the easiest way to start, but in this video, I'll demonstrate two easy designs to introduce you to creating a beautiful full-color landscape. I started with two mugs that are bone dry. On one mug, I'll use vinyl stickers and tape as resists, and the other I'll leave just plain. I found this removable vinyl in the craft store with the cutting machine materials. This blue painter's tape is also easily removable, and you can find it at any hardware store. I simply cut some of the vinyl off the roll. If you have a cutting machine, you can program whatever shapes you want and cut it out that way. I simply drew organic shapes with a pencil. Note that there are various sizes and shapes, as variety is important for an interesting design. I cut my shapes out with scissors. It really didn't matter if I followed the lines exactly or not. If you're a shaky cutter, that can work even better for a more natural look. On the first mug, I simply picked out the shapes I wanted, peeled the backings off, and applied them to the mug around the center and towards the top. Next, I began tearing strips of tape and applying them to the bottom like they were pieces of grass. Remember that variety and randomness is a good thing here, so you can tear the pieces however you want. I worked the tape all the way to the edge and folded it under to the bottom of the mug. Here it is all taped up. I'm happy with that. Our next step will be to spray both of the mugs. I'm going to use a primary color scheme for my palette. Two blues, a yellow, and a red. I'll be spraying and using this little atomizer. Oh, and before you ask, there is no way underglaze can get into my mouth when using this. <laughs> I'll start with the baby blue underglaze. I like to run it through a little tea strainer to make sure there's no little clumpy bits to clog up the sprayer. Sometimes I get brush hairs or clay bits in there. This underglaze is a bit thick, so I added a little water to thin it down to a pancake batter consistency. I ran it back through the strainer and into the atomizer cup. I placed the lid down over the top. I set up a little box theater and opened the main garage door to my studio for ventilation as I spray. I want plenty of ventilation for safety reasons. I'm starting with the cup that has the stickers on it. To operate the sprayer, I simply blew through the two. For this cup, I'm going to apply more cool colors, or colors to the bluer side, all over this piece. I applied the underglaze in spurts for color blasts. I made sure I didn't cover the entire piece. I do want to leave some of the cup with the white clay showing. I put that aside, and now I'll spray the cup that doesn't have any stickers on it. Here I'm only applying the blue sparingly to the top and the bottom edges only. Keeping the baby blue in the cup, I'm simply adding a couple of dollops of the intense yellow to the blue to create a nice light green color, because blue and yellow make green. I'm mixing it really well. On the mug without any stickers, I'm spraying this green on the bottom of the mug only. 
Note that I only spray in spurts so I don't cover all the blue. Now I'm switching to the mug with the stickers. Again, I'm spraying the bottom edge of the mug being careful not to cover all the blue. For the last cool color, I want to create a darker green, so I added some dollops of the electric blue to the mix and stirred it around. You can see what the last color was on the end of the tube versus how dark it is now. Again, I'm applying it solely to the bottom edge of the two cups. Now let's switch to the warm color side of the palette. I washed out the greens and now I'm just putting pure yellow into the container. On the mug with the stickers, I'm only spraying it along the bottom edge. On the mug without the stickers, I'm spraying in spurts all over the mug, but making sure that I don't cover over all the other colors I've already applied. Now I'm adding little dollops of the bright red into the yellow. My shapes really lend themselves to this California poppy orange color. On the cup with the stickers, I only apply the orange to the bottom section over the yellow spurts mostly. On the cup without the stickers, I'm applying the orange to mostly the center and the top sections. I want this cup to appear more warm than cool, so I'm generous with the orange. Finally, I cleaned out the orange from the sprayer and I put all bright red underglaze into the sprayer cup. On the cup without the stickers, I was very generous with the red spurts of color at the top and the center sections. I did have to spray over my previous spurt several times as the color underneath wanted to show through and I wanted the red to be a bit darker. On the stickered cup, I just sprayed down along the bottom edge a little bit. I want this cup to appear on the cooler side with the blues and the greens being more prominent. Upon my final look over, I saw that the darker green had been muted by the baby blue, so I gave it another spray to darken it along the bottom. And that's better. Now when the stickerless cup was totally dry, I picked out the stickers that I liked and applied them to the middle and top sections of the cup. Like the other cup, I also applied the tape to the bottom edge. With a damp sponge, I began to wipe away the underglaze around the resist stickers. I made sure to rinse out my sponge really well after a few swipes. As soon as I got all the underglaze wiped off, I removed the stickers. Don't let them set for too long or some of the underglaze will peel off too. You can see where that's happened here, but I, I kind of sort of like that antique look. Switching to the other cup, I removed the stickers from that one too. Note how cool the cup looks compared to the other one. To finish this cup, I drew a borderline around the foot. I then carved stems down from the flowers. Now to complete the flowers and warm up the piece, I painted solid red streaks inside each of the silhouetted shapes, leaving white border lines to separate the background from the flowers. I made sure to give each flower three coats for a solid layer.
For the grassy meadow, I mixed a bit of the yellow and that dark green leftover underglaze and painted within the grass silhouetted lines. For the bottom border edge, I painted it with three solid layers. Here's another version of that one, where I added a solid mountain line behind the flowers. I added this after I sprayed everything. I just painted it over all the applied colors, but under the stems. For the stems, I just mixed the yellow and the green, and painted stems down from the flowers. The brush I'm using is actually a fingernail detailer brush that's my favorite. There's a link in the description if you'd like to check them out. I also added a borderline along the top rim with the green to frame in the flowers. And here it is, all finished. Here's another variation where I taped off the top edge before wiping away all the underglaze. I also outlined all the flowers. I can't wait to glaze these. I glazed them all with Amico C11, then fired them to cone 5 with a 4-minute hold. I hope this project inspired you to experiment with mixing your underglazes, understanding the properties of primary colors insofar as the warmth and coolness, and adding to that the elements of design, can really add another level of interest to your work. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.